Hello everybody, Peter Serrata here from SlashHump.com and I am here with Jermaine Lucier, Alex Billington from Looper Showing, and Russ Fisher, also from Slash Home. Uh, we just got out of the Sony panel. Uh, they showed us uh, extended footage from Total Recall. We saw an extended trailer from Looper, uh, Ryan Johnson's Looper. Uh, but most of you are probably watching this because you want to hear about Neil Blomkamp's sec second film. Neil, Neil did uh, District 9 a few years back, uh, which also kind of uh, had a huge buzz at, at uh, Comic-Con and premiered at Comic-Con the year later. Um, and this is the second feature. It, it also takes on... Uh, it's called Elysium. You didn't use that title. <laughs> Elysium. Um, it, it also focuses on, uh, you know, kind of world issues, the have-nots versus the, the, the people who have something. Uh, the, the, the quick plot synopsis is that, uh, that uh, Earth is overpopulated and kind of like just filled with poverty and, and just it's crap. Uh, all, all, all the rich people live on the space station called Elysium, which is basically this utopian uh, space station. Um, and uh, we finally got to learn some information about the Matt Damon character. Uh, yeah, well, you, you tell us. About um, so, so as Pete said, Earth is Earth is crap. A, a, a bunch of what we see of Earth was <laughs> yeah. shot in the second largest dump in the world, in Mexico City, and it looks like it. It looks like take the take the the poverty that we saw in District Nine and just spread it from horizon to horizon, and, it, and it's insane. And so within that lives Matt Damon, who's an ex-con. He's he's uh, he's on parole, um, and and this and he like many people in this part of Earth seem to be managed in a tyrannical manner by a remote bureaucracy that you interface with through these kind of like weird robotic, uh, you know, rudimentary talking heads and that sort of thing. Um, he, uh, he works a crappy job at a factory and he's exposed to radiation and he's basically told that he's going to die in five days. He's got a lethal dose of radiation. You see this bit where he's, after this accident, a robot kind of comes up to him, some sort of drone, and is like, you've been poisoned by radiation. Here's some pills. You're going to be dead soon. Thank you for your service. And he goes to talk to some dude to uh, basically try to get him a ticket to Elysium, which is this rich people's ring world that uh, anybody who's read old Larry Niven sci-fi stories will recognize or anybody who's played Halo will recognize. It's that, you know, that very much this kind of giant circular uh, paradise. That, and uh, he's, he's and, going because he, he can get cured he can get, Yeah, he can be cured up there. So, they, so he wants to go up to Elysium. Um, but, of course, the ticket isn't free, and uh, basically the trade-off for the ticket is that he is, uh, he's given a target, and he needs to essentially download information from this guy's head and to make all of this happen uh, Damon is implanted with some really horrific and rudimentary looking tech like a uh, surgery in the back like of his skull skeleton. and like yeah, he basically yeah. gets an exoskeleton it becomes it looks yeah. becomes a cyborg he becomes a weapon he becomes a, like a yeah, human weapon or and then uh, we see he sort of performs this uh, heist uh, a character played by William Fickner yeah, yeah. Uh, who is a Elysium uh, uh, resident and when he when Matt Damon's character goes to Take, uh, you know, perform this heist. Uh, you realize, like the people on Elysium are alerted to this, and they send in like their guy on Earth, played by Charlton Copley, and then of from District there, Nine. of District Nine, and from there we sort of see this battle, and then we sort, and then this for sort of it sort of picks up a little bit where you get to see. Uh, the, and he's also dressed as like exoskeleton thing, you know. Yeah. It's almost like a, like a like, yeah. like football uh, equipment if it was like robotic. And they uh, they have these guns attached, and they're just fighting. He's throwing these bombs at them that look like maybe like saucers, and they explode you and like very they, they, very they look, violent. They look like throwing stars that blow up. Yeah, like yeah, 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 and. Uh, and yeah, and then from there, I mean, what else am I missing story well, we, we, we shouldn't say anything about yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, the thing is, it's like, what we saw here, it looks like every, it, it looks like everything that was recognizably Neil Blomkamp in District 9, there's the poverty on Earth, there's a very dusty, awful looking uh, location on Earth. They talked about how uh, the, all the dust in this, in this location was actually fecal matter, and so yeah, yeah. when they would sweat, they'd basically be smearing human and animal crap on their faces. But more to the point, uh, we see that. We see this uh, dystopian bureaucracy. We see a conflict between economic classes. 
we see very destructive weapons technology that results in splattery practical effects. We see Blomkamp really making the movie with as much practical stuff as possible. Before the panel, he, he kind of gave a disclaimer that it was all rough footage with early previous effects, and it's... It kind of, looked like that. And it, it looks doesn't good. look. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, yeah. like a, well, some of the, yeah, some yeah. of the shots were super, super previous, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like like Tron One stuff. But of course, not going to look like but that. But none of that but stuff it's still, is crucial. Like no, you know, it looked great. The footage, you'd see that it's a story. It's a story with characters, and in in well, you it, know, it looked like it would work. If it looked like with the with the effects finished at the level that they are now. If you cut the movie together fully and ran it, it would play like gangbusters. It oh, yeah. Be beautiful. It's, I think yeah, that's we were sort of, you know, like bearing a lead where this footage looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I've seen a lot of Comic Con reels. This is like top five, like Comic Con reels where I was just like jaw on floor, smile, goosebumps. Yeah. Like, it was just cut so, it's cut so well. It, it gave you this it was seven minutes, so it was a pretty good yeah. size of a chunk. Yeah. Uh, and you get to see sort of like how he ends up going to Elysium and like and you see yeah. this beautiful like utopic place where you know you, you sit in this thing and oh, that's not as cool yeah, as the rest yeah, of it. There's right. good there's guns yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Well, and, and to, 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 to me the thing I took out of this is how great of a, of a world builder Neil Blomkamp yeah. is. And um, you, you know it, it was so fast cutting stuff at times. I, I'm not sure if I can make a, a, a huge assessment but I, I was blown away and the world he created like in District 9 uh, like how everything has a visual like it all fits together like the guns all look like they were made by the same since you know what I mean like and, and like usually with a lot of these sci-fi films it feels like it's like a mashup of a bunch of just different concept artists and came you've seen it and, and you've like, all yeah, seen it before but yeah. the bomb cam stuff you yeah. really haven't and, seen before and, it's very him yeah. I watched it when yeah, we yeah. started the first like couple of shots I thought it was District 9 and then it sort of pulls back and you get a little bit more and you see like yeah. Thor yeah. said it's much bigger like I tweeted, it looks like that, but on like an intergalactic yeah. scale. Because I mean, now we, we're traveling we, to space yeah. and, and all this yeah. stuff. And That's what you're it, saying. Like he creates a world. He literally creates the whole yeah. world. Yeah. Like, we see a lot of the world. We see off the world. We see, like you're saying, much bigger in scope, much bigger in yeah. scale, but still with all yeah. of the great sensibilities that make Neil Blomkamp such a great filmmaker and storyteller. And at the same time, you've got Matt Damon in the center of this thing. And Damon is playing a role that we haven't seen him play. I mean, you could liken this in some fashion to the Bourne movies, but it's really, what he's doing here doesn't look like Bourne at all. He, he looks... He looks <laughs> We're in San Diego, so the, the military... Yeah, the military the, the, no, no, it's, it's Charlton Copley from uh, <laughs> Elysium. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll lean forward and I'll talk loudly as if I'm uh, speaking rudely to a foreign person uh, as an American. Um, and... But, but what we get out of Damon here is that uh, he looks desperate, and he looks like he's in pain, and he looks like he's in a horrible situation, and his performance looks great. I mean, it's difficult to judge. This is cut up. This is incomplete. And, you know, we're reacting with a lot of exuberance to the footage because it looked great. I've already seen people saying, well, hey, we all thought that about Prometheus last year. And yeah, there's a point to be made there, but... I think we've also all seen District 9 and, yeah. and yeah. I thought that movie worked really well yeah. and what I see here suggests that Elysium might work just as well and maybe better than District yeah. well, 9. And don't forget about Jodie Foster. Yeah. Jodie Foster runs Elysium and I mean she's a you know, multiple Oscar winner and you know an incredible person who said that you know she saw District 9 said it was, thought it was a perfect movie and just like Damon she was like I want to work with this guy. And uh, we the, the seven minutes is it really glosses over her role in the movie, but it's obviously substantial. Otherwise, yeah. Jodie Foster wouldn't agree to it, yeah. even though yeah. she wanted to work with Blumkamp. She so. seemed to be well, working got, with, she, an, with an accent of some, like kind of a yeah. German accent. I think she said French. French. Oh, she's French. Oh, French. Okay, yeah. Well, well, Alex, what do you think about it? We haven't heard much. No, 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 you guys. Tired. That's, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's uh, what no, I, the, the one I really want to mention, Jermaine touched on this. Charlotte Copley is the bad guy, and he like fights with a sword at one point. Oh, he's got um, that great he shield. As, yeah, uh, he has a force field shield. That oh, that's awesome. was like one of the points where watching the footage, I actually was like, "Whoa!" I said it out yeah. loud. There were a couple of those moments, and he just looks like I think he's going to be an iconic villain after this movie. Just the way he looks and how yeah, yeah. how badass he is in his his dialogue, and he's it's, just he like, seems like it's just it's perfect. Yeah, he seems like a cyborg Bond villain where he's like very very like up up and very like crazy. And he said that he, when he read the script, he was like. He didn't. Neil didn't ask him to play anybody. He goes, "I think I would love to play this villain. Something. It's something like it's a great opportunity to do something great." Yeah. And you can see it in it. He's very, very like crazy and very like physical. 
and uh, yeah. it looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's you know, funny because we saw this footage after seeing this extended Total Recall preview. And we've all seen a lot of the Total Recall footage and we know what it looks like and we know that it's a remake of a Paul Verhoeven movie. And, and having that stuff in front of Elysium to me was really made Elysium pop because Elysium to me, and I said this on Twitter, but it looks like a continuation of that Paul Verhoeven sci-fi sensibility where you've got you've got really good characters, you've got a solid script, you've got ideas that relate to the world that we live in, and you've also got that stuff being expressed through this really dramatic and, and splattery violence. Yeah, which say, has a violence appeal. of Verhoeven too. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so it's it's that stuff well, that's kind of you know, all it, together and, and it looks very promising. It, yeah. It's interesting that you bring up Total Recall because this Total Recall remake that we'll see in a couple weeks is, is very much in broad strokes. The same the thing is Elysium. Yeah. I mean, you have this guy played by Colin Farrell who works in a ro the factory where they build the robots, uh -huh. and he lives in this society that's poor, poverty driven. And on the other side of the world is New Britain, where it's the you know all the rich people live. Yeah. And it's funny how different both of these movies. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, like, I, but yeah. to, to, it, in it, defense of the Total Recall yeah, footage, yeah. I thought the Total Recall it, it looked, looked very yeah. cool. It looked. It was a way... It looked, even, it, looked, it, looked, it looked fun. It looked fun. It was a little eye-rolly in that it was like... The trailer was like five minutes long and it was every single beat from the original yeah. movie and the original story uh, with a couple nods that were kind of funny. Yeah. I were kind of, but yeah. I thought it, it, this looked better than anything I'd seen. Uh, it really looked like uh, much bigger, much more action-packed than I expected. Even from Weissman, who does action-packed movies, this would look like yeah, yeah. pretty insane. I thought it looked really good. I, I was not looking forward to it. I am now looking forward to it. Yeah, that they, said, they, it's they, probably going to be... Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But, I mean... <laughs> the, I the action looks fun. Some of the sci-fi set pieces look, look fun. Uh, the, the only other thing I want to say is, you know, uh, Total Recall was made for over $200 million. Uh, yeah. Elysium and, and the other film we saw were made for around 50 to $60 million. Right. Um, yeah. And it's, it's crazy that we're talking about those other two more than we're talking about the... Well, the it, also, it also... Cut, yeah. And also, yeah. this is... Elysium's like a year and a half out. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So we have some time. And Total Recall, we've been talking about for a year. Yeah. But, but I yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't want to leave out Looper. You know, we yeah. saw footage from Ryan Johnson's Looper and... They, they, there was maybe five minutes shown, and the only reason I'm not talking about it very much is because I tried to watch as little of it as possible, because I'm continuing on my program of trying to see Looper with as much of a, of a fresh take as possible. Yeah. Um, it, it what I did hear and what I saw trailer. looked great, oh, man, yeah. and the, the discussion of the movie made me really, really excited to see it, especially uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was there, and he talked about his approach to playing a younger Bruce Willis and how he didn't want to mimic Willis, but how he tried to create a character that could plausibly be a younger version of what Willis could be, and and the stuff we saw from Looper, and the little bit of stuff I saw from Looper personally, looked fantastic, and it yeah. remains one of the movies I'm most interested in seeing this year. So I don't I don't want to I don't want to yeah, walk yeah. away from this um, minimizing it, especially oh, no, against not Elysium. At all. Yeah. Uh, I Elysium, just yeah. didn't watch as much of the stuff. Elysium so is the takeaway because it was the big showy. It was the it was the it's closer. The it was the new yeah. thing. Yeah. Looper. We've seen the trailers. What we saw was the last trailer, the spoiler, most spoilery trailer with like three extra minutes of footage. It was like two okay. more of like extended scenes, and they looked they look great. Like uh, I'm gonna do a little write up on it, but it was. I mean, like, I'm very excited for it. You know, it just it looks like uh, an yeah. original, fun sci-fi movie, which is like what Elysium is. You know, uh, yeah. it takes the, the tropes that we know and puts like a real human story into it with some cool effects and stuff. And that's the, like they, somebody said it was the moderator goes, "This is the reason. This like this reason we love what we love." Yeah. And I think both those movies look like they qualify. A a any final thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that that's the. I think that what yeah. you just alluded to is the kicker between Total Recall and between Looper and Elysium is that it, Total Recall looks big and splashy and fun, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And I like Colin Farrell, but his the character that we see him playing doesn't have the appeal of the characters that we see uh, in Looper from Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and in Elysium from Matt Damon. I mean, the, the stuff that we're seeing from those guys in those movies looks just on a completely different level. To Original me. ideas versus Absolutely. remakes and things like that. There you that. go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So let's keep with original ideas. You, you, Sounds you, like what we're saying. You can find more of our work at SlashFilm.com. You can find him at FirstShowing.net. Uh, and we'll see you next time.